day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. You know, I want to go back to something else too. Uh, 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 and so they, I know there was some conversation said about uh, a general preaching. Basically, you just want to you just want to introduce them to Christ, and then uh, obviously with their discipleship or whatever, that's when I guess you get into lifestyles and other things to the priest and so on and so forth. But I think I have brought up the thing about the watchman, and I think that in other words, here's the deal: we talk about all these different types of sins, but we have to have a standard, I think, and it has to represent something. And so, and so, how would a drunkard know that he's sinning against God if we didn't tell him about drunkenness being something that would be? How would a guy that's out there fornicating, running around having sex, if he don't know that is that is something that's against God? I mean, he may not. So, in other words, we have to we have to lit, we have to preach the standard. We, we we have to preach the standard regardless of where we are, so that so that so that they know that this is something that they're engaging in. That's contrary to what the Creator would have you to be engaging in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so, yeah. and so, and so, and so that we, in other words, our obligation as a watchman is is to is to tell what the standard is, and to always tell what the standard is, so that they, so that they don't know that oh, this is what I'm engaged in. This is not representative of that. This is this lifestyle doesn't line up with that, or this is something that I'm actually doing. That is unnatural, or that's an abomination to who created me. So we have to kind of know um, something, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, everybody nowadays, obviously, with technology and communication, does there's some point of, of due diligence. You just don't go to the dealership and buy a car and take everything they say for word and walk away and buy the car, or you don't. I mean, you kind of do a, do a little background in your, on your research on your own. You kind of understand what it's about. In other words, it's like this right here. And we've talked about this. It's not a conversation. I'm just not going to jump on Black Lives Matter bandwagon unless I go to the website and read the bylaws. And I kind of learn what they represent and what their agenda is. So I'm going to have to do a little more due diligence about something before I just decide to jump in and engage and invest myself in it or call myself something or that. I need to know more about what it represents, what it's about, what it's founded on, what's its agenda, what's the outcome. For me just to say yay nay to you know what i'm saying so i think that we have a responsibility to to do that i think that uh well, John the, uh, might have said something earlier that we might have missed and so i just want to just, just because i thought about this this week and i've been doing a lot of thinking about uh our witness in the earth Here's the thing. Uh, I don't believe that that most young folks have actually heard the real gospel. Right. They yeah. have. I, I I think that what has turned them off is 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 us. Yeah. And the way we yep. live. And yeah. they are able to see the conflict between what we say and what we do in that building and how, and how we get along in that building. And then when we leave that building, how we treat each other and what we do outside that building. And they got no sense to know yes, what, what that, that same thing I'm doing now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now I'm doing that. It's hey, hey, it's it's not it's it's but here's the thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw in about. And I don't know Harper on this, but I'm, I want you to understand that su the severity of it. Uh, when you try to normalize a sin, uh -huh. when you try to normalize sin, I ain't talking about I ain't talking about conviction. I'm talking about you want to normalize it so that it becomes accepted as part of the kingdom. You lock yourself in to never being able. To receive the light on light of truth on that thing, so you can really know who know the God that you say you know in that area in your life. So when you normalize, when you normalize that it's okay for me to marry another man, I'm a man, and you normalize me marrying another man as being acceptable in the sight of God. So you don't realize what you've done. That is that 
that that locks you in. Once you believe that lie, that locks you into being deceived about other things. Come on, and come then, on. Because the, the enemy, the, the enemy ain't gonna stop. If I can get you to believe that you 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 a male, and he can convince you to believe you a woman, what would make you think that rap's gonna stop? It's okay. I can convince this joke to believe some other stuff. The, 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 I think I think the issue that we're looking at though is that there are so many that have been convinced already. We're looking at this generation who have yeah. not been preached to. These kids are already in those situations. The question becomes, how do we reach them? When he says, "If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me," yeah. we the, the relationships are inherently going to go bad. Sin don't work. The wages of sin is death. So they are going to come to a place. They are going to come to a place where they're going to begin to question that relationship. If we're already introducing them to the light, when they come yeah. to that place, then they can turn. Yeah. What has happened was now this this is this is instead of preaching Jesus, preaching homosexuality. I was preaching against something before I pro preached what I, I still no light before I pointed my finger at the darkness. Yeah. And I'm just saying that in general. Don't be a fornicator, don't be a liar, don't be that, that homosexuality key is it's a sin against God. Well, what do we know about God? Nobody even introduced them to Jesus yet. Nobody knows that Jesus Christ is better than everything that they're going to experience in this life. We haven't even introduced that portion of it. Yeah. So when I said that, you know, for some of us, um, and I can't say because it depends on where we're going to be working at. And, and now I think the powerful ministry really begins to gain its its uh, its distinctions. The, five, the different officers begin to gain a distinction. As a person on the street preaching the gospel to somebody, the gospel is the reconciliation of God with man. That's what yeah. I've been trying to consent. That's a con yeah. this concise thing. God has reconciled his creation to himself by the man Jesus Christ sacrificed yeah. on the cross. Bam. I that. That's my part. Now we're going to rejoice and we're going to play. And y'all need to join this party. When they join this party, now it's time for me to get out of the way. Is there, okay, Pastor Taylor? Uh, here's this new converse. Yeah, okay, uh, 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 Pastor Lee. Here's the most people that she teach. Now nah, we're going to get into the good part. Yeah. I'm going back out in the street, preach Jesus some more. <laughs> wait, 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 well, I, I'm not dealing with that. Stuff. I'm not dealing with that. I'm dealing with these folks who are already in the church. Exactly. Oh, these people okay. are already in the church. Yeah, okay. And acknowledging the relationship with Christ. Right. And they gave. And, and That's different with that, that, me preaching out there. Now, if I go on the corner and preach, yeah. I'm expecting to run into gays and prostitutes and drug addicts and all kinds of stuff. Right. That's what I'm expecting to run into. Right. But they're going to hear the real, genuine, authentic gospel. Right. And the Spirit of God is going to use that truth to, to be able to discern what in their lives he can use to bring conviction using that truth. Amen. But Evangelism. The thing when you talk about inside the church, and folks who are already in there and been under discipleship, and they're still proclaiming that I'm, listen, I'm the, I'm the Lord, I'm in a member of the body of Christ, and I still hold to this normalized sin. And see, this is only one question I was throwing there too, is that it seemed like we, uh, as a church though, is has normalized adultery, fornication, drunkenness, lying, and unforgiveness. To my point is that the full gospel is you're gonna preach something, you can't, I think to me it's almost like somebody's washing a car and they're, Every they trying to focus on this, let's say homosexual, right? So I'm watching my door. My door is it's got homosexual sin stain on it, but but I, I forget about this this lying over here, this unforgiveness over here. In other words, the world is looking at us to say, look, yeah, you can preach that issue. Well, I'm like Jimmy Hill now. Jimmy Hill said this. Jimmy Hill says nobody else is asking you to normalize the adultery. Nobody's asking you to normalize drunkenness. But you know I, I, nobody else is but coming to the church and saying, I, "Listen, I'm a whole mongrel. Normalize it." You, but you, see, you know what I'm saying about it? Normalizing comes in different forms, right? There's preachers who have been sleeping with every woman in the church, but he's preaching, and and some of the people know he's doing it. Is that not well, saying I'm normalizing it? Well, if I well, let me tell you, say this. Come on, uh, bro. let me see how many people. How many people on this uh, on this meeting? We got, we had five now, four, six. Okay. Let me tell you something. I don't mean no harm, and I ain't trying to be ugly, and I don't think of nobody. But you better not let me find out 
you sleep around with somebody. That's the whole point. And the yeah, point you, is you, that the world. Johnson, Bell, Taylor. Come on. Bill, Green, Brown, or you better let me find out. That, and that, and uh, that, well, Jackson ain't here this morning, but if Bill Jackson here with this, you better let me find out. I don't like him nobody. Exactly. But I believe that what you do go affect me. Yes, sir. So you better wear well, better believe. I'm yes, gonna do sir. it in meeting. I'm gonna do it in spirit of love, but I'm listening. You will be held accountable. Exactly. Amen. And, and Amen. Go ahead. And I think that's the key, though, is that see, when the, you gotta look at it from the world's perspective, they see what somebody does outside the four walls. Yeah. And then they go in that wall and yeah. they're going to act like, oh, hallelujah, God bless yes, you. The, the point is, I agree, sin, all forms of sin need not to be normalized in the body yes, of Christ. Yes, and sir. we just got to make sure that everybody understand that you got to clean your act up so that people understand that this ain't right. That's what yes. I'm saying. And I think what Bishop Elder was saying is, let's bring people to Christ. We got to bring the fornicator the good, the bad, and ugly to Jesus. Yes. And, right. and, and Jimmy, yeah, but, I agree. And when you bring them, you got to realize you're bringing them not to stay where they are. Exactly. That's the whole point. And, yeah. and Jimmy, even other piece about the watchman is his job, once he has done his part, it said the enemy is coming. The blood is no longer on his hands. Your job is to preach this gospel, the full gospel, but it's a point where it's like this. If I, if I tell you your shirt is red, you need to change it. And you keep, I'm, how long I keep telling about this shirt is red? I'm going to go ahead and keep doing what I need to do and move forward. But you, your hands is clean when you do your part as a watchman. You do your part. Yeah, we, you, you must, the part was more or less, the point was more or less, uh, and we don't want them to wear red shirts. We don't want you to get to the point where say, okay, well, it's really not red. So I mean, come on in. You can go. You can do that. That's what we can't do. In other words, we right. can't normalize right. that which we. In other words, we have to still stand on a standard, and we're not. No, you get me wrong. I never isolate anyone's sin. I, I, uh, uh. The standard is the standard across the board for right. everything. Yeah. Gossip, whatever, 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 everything. No thing is exempt. However, and I think if you put a balanced message, I think you're good. The yeah, balance yeah, yeah. is across the board. Just stay balanced. Can I finish? 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 Everything is balanced, and we need to be balanced. But in some things, he wasn't balanced. Uh, so why should I be balanced in all things? That yeah. temple was something different. What happened to you when you when you stole from your neighbor or whatever, or did this, did that? Wasn't the same as if you walked into, into the Holy of Holies. It shouldn't have been in there. It wasn't a balance. It was, it was, it was some things he placed a little bit more emphasis on. You know, I think in Proverbs, it says that there's seven things that God hates. Ain't all abomination unto him. So then he distinguishes some things uh, from some other things. I think that there is, I hear what you're saying, balance, but I don't think that's proper usage when we're talking about the things of God because I don't think things are balanced in him. No, I agree. I think what I'm saying is a bit, uh, uh, Jim is saying is, as long as the person knows that you're addressing, if, if that's the understanding, that you're addressing every situation as when it's sin is sin, you call it sin is sin, then there, there's no, you have no, nobody can throw it back at you. Because I'm not trying to normalize any sin. Sin is sin. Yeah. And if you're, as long as you're, you're addressing those areas, I'm just saying, as long as the person knows that this is you consistent all the way across the board, not only in words, but in deeds, I don't think nobody can fault you for that. Because you're right, normalizing is to sit there and say, this is, this is, this is acceptable, but this is not. None of the stuff is acceptable. The, that, that bitch, that's what Elder was, I think Bishop was saying. Well, I think that, well, I think a lot of what goes on now is a, is a lot of normalizing and tap dancing. Yeah. And acceptance of um, and saying everything is okay. I think that's prevalent now in our quote unquote Christendom in America. I think the pendulum has swung to the fact that we're being forced and we're becoming accepting of whatever the world is doing. Now we're saying, okay, can be done as well from a Christian perspective. I think we are are are, are not uh standing on the standard 
And I think we're we're trying to make sure that we're we're pleasing to everybody and everybody's happy with us and everybody agrees with everything we say. Let me say something. It's going this is gonna cause separation. It's gonna cause some people to get uncomfortable. It's gonna cause some people to like what you don't say. It's gonna it should be causing some prosecution. You should walk out of that feeling condemned sometimes convicted. If you're walking out of there every time from every perspective, from everything you know about Christianity, and you feeling good about yourself and you're happy and everything is going well, then I want to my profess to you, you didn't hear the gospel. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I agree. And I, I think I think that and I'm I'm top that I'm totally agree with that. That's what I'm saying is we should teach people to conform to the image of Christ and knowing that Christ, the Holy Spirit, is the one that will conform them. Our job is to conform or point toward Jesus. But I'm saying is that we just got to make sure that we're bearing our fruits. And I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole, as well as individual believers. You got, we got to bear these fruits. We got to show that where's, where's love in, in the act of, of uh, adultery? Or where's love in the act of unforgiveness? Where's love in the act of, of going into those areas of uh, homosexuality or fornication, right? Where's the love in it? Where's the self-control in it? Where's the gentle? Where's the goodness in it? We got to make sure people, we got to show this. We got to bear fruit that support what we're saying. Well, the, the, wow. if, if your motive, if you, you, you see, this, this, the whole thing is all about what God is doing in the heart of a man. Yeah. That, that's what this good tree thing really is all about. Because if you go on in the text, he, he stopped talking about trees, and he started talking about the heart. What's in the heart? You, you know. He used this tree as an instrument to picture something, but he yeah. really concerned about what's in your heart. Yeah. And you see, the, the scripture says that under, under the new covenant, that, that God will give you a new heart. Yeah. Come on, brother. I, yeah. It's a this, 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 of new spirit. Again, again, David said that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If I'm operating towards no person's salvation, and if it's not being done out of compassion, then that means I'm out of alignment with God. I mean, that is, that's from the scriptural perspective anyway. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Faith worketh by love. All the things that he had compassion on the masses and he healed them of all their afflictions. So I should have working in me some desire some something, some portion of Christ that said these people need to hear this deep because if they don't, they're going to be lost. I should be more concerned about their well-being than I am about anything that deals with me on a specific level. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yes, sir. If I'm not group driven group by that, if I'm not driven by that, what's group you talking about? Which group you talking about? Which group, which group of people are you talking about? You talking about? No, I mean, for, for, I mean, mean for both, either in house or out of house, right now because. Okay, well, uh, once you get the house, ones you out, out, the same out, out say, say, you know, once you get inside the house, that don't work. Well, when you when they come inside the house, you don't obligate to you don't obligate oh, to no. discipleship. Discipleship, you got to discipleship. Right, you got to discipleship. You can't keep preaching the gospel about getting saved. Once they get saved, you got to move from salvation now from the cross. Now you got to move to bearing the cross. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> but 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 <laughs> even that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even that, even that, still moderated or, 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 or governed by the compassion that you have for that person. Okay. Especially, in the, and I say, I'm not a pastor, so I don't know how that goes. But a pastor's heart towards people is normally going to be a little bit more uh -huh. lenient than mine would be. You know, what I'm saying a, a, a compassion, a forgiveness, or tolerance may be greater than that of a, even a teacher or or, or or an evangelist because. They're not really in the face of these people to watch them make the errors all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like my children are my children are assertive, your children are belligerent. You know what I'm saying? So we're, there's going to be a difference, but there has to be something in us that's driving us to what the will be that person. It's never cut off. You know what I'm saying? And I know that there's some point where you man, I got y'all lost, man. I got no, no more. Oh, your mic is messed up. Audio is lost. The Lord, audio is lost. Can you hear me? We we lost you. You you broken up. Man, well, that's all right. Yeah, I'm good. It's, and, it's messing and, up too often for me. And then no, no, this is what Bishop said. Bishop, I like this scripture you quoted a long time ago. <laughs> it's a good scripture. 
And I think we need to understand, Jimmy. Look at this. I love this scripture, starting in verse nine, in First Corinthians chapter six. Right? He said, "Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? But be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. I like his balance right there. Effeminate, uh, nor abusers." Of themselves with mankind, neither thieves nor covetous. Look, they got a whole list there. No, no, that, 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 that's the, that's what that's what we got to preach. There you go. He that's said, what we got to hold people to. Come you on, keep one of these out and normalize it. Come on, no more of it. You, and I think that's what they trying to do. He said, and then it, did I like this verse of love, Bishop? You said it. You quoted it many times. <laughs> hey. <laughs> And such <laughs> was some of you. But we want we want to wash people. We want to get people to be washed. Yes, sir. But <laughs> he said, but you didn't stay that way. <laughs> and that's the key, Jimmy. I think it's bringing people to the gospel to know it's not. It's a it's a transformation. It's a conforming, right? <laughs> I think, and that's why we see some people. I think they leave at the. Uh, it's such I leave I think they leave it 10, Bishop. They leave it 10 and don't understand our goal <laughs> is to be such worth some of you. <laughs> our job is to become the such became something else. And and I think if we keep them in there, because what's this wash mean? You've been washed, but you are sanctified, but you, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, the spirit of God. Now preach that. Because that's, that's where it's going to come from. That's yeah. where it comes from. Right. I mean, in and of themselves, they're never going to be there. But in the, in the spirit of God, their it's submission true. to the Lord, their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is what's driving those things and what gives us access to the Father in the first place. Exactly. I mean, there's no access even to the point. When I keep thinking about the one, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop because I know my, my, my span is going to be limited as far as what I do. But it said that go out and get everybody, the good and the bad, the good and the evil. Bring them all in. I mean, get everybody. We want to we want to fish with a net. We're going to bring everybody in there with a net. Now, those who have had the, I guess, and I guess the, the clothing that he referenced was who? It was the blood of the lamb. We gain access solely by the blood of the lamb. Our exactly. This is to the presence of God because our right is the filthy rags. Yeah. So, the, the relationship now the culture becomes for them to build that relationship with Jesus, and then six eleven begins to make sense. Yeah, and for some of you, but you are washed. We are washed. You are yeah. sanctified, but you are justified. Where yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, my Lord of our God. That's the key. You might want to pay careful attention to what that word "sanctified" means. Say again. Uh, sanctified means set aside. In relationship to that list of things that he calls out, every one of those things that he itemizes, he's trying to tell you that in Christ you have been set apart from Come that lifestyle. Come on, you've been set apart from those things. Come on now, I'm right, right. But right. now, first of all, you, had, you it took blood to bring about the forgiveness of those things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why you heard the old folk talk about washed in the blood of the Lamb. Come on, sir. Forgiveness, atonement, come on, come through the blood of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the blood of Christ, listen, the blood of Christ will not deliver you <laughs> from being an adulterer. Come on. It's gonna, take, it's gonna take some effort to deliver you from adulterer. Come on, All man. the blood can do is wash you from this. From Come on. Clean you in God's sight. Now, how do you get deliverance? Come on now. Through G through God, it says by the Spirit of our God. The washing of the water. Deliverance? Washing of the water by the word. By uh, the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. You get delivered by the life of Christ. Amen. Okay. Now you preach it. That's what I'm talking about. It, it's the life of Christ. And that's what Jesus says. I come that you might have life. Right. Amen. Life don't violate the law. It fulfills it. It fulfills. Come on now. And I, I think that's, that's what he's talking about pushing it toward Jesus. 
is Jesus that does the changing. And, and forget this, I ain't trying to normalize nothing. You know, what about 12, uh, uh, Bishop? That one is talking, what are you saying in 12? What would that 12 mean anyway? Verse 12. What, what are you trying to say in 12? I, I, I was reading that. You see, what he's trying to tell you in verse 12 is that he'd really been brought now under the, under the dominion of God in Christ. Uh-huh. So all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Come on now. <laughs> see, there are some things that ain't in your best interest based on the position that you're in now. Come on now. You might have a right the to position do that. that you're in now, you are in Christ now. Come on now. And you don't want to yield your members now. That's what he says in Romans 6. Don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Come on now. That's what costs you. Yes, sir. And if you mess around now, if you mess around and make that a lifestyle. Uh-huh. Well. well. It's one, one thing for you to go out there and slip. It ain't it's a thing for you to go out there and wallow in the mire. Come on, sir. It ain't, it ain't expedient for you, is it? <laughs> hey, hey, you know how many people said I got a right that you may have yeah. any, exercise their right to do something, but it's not expedient. David went out there and slipped. Come on. But he didn't wallow in the mire. Come on now. He got up. He came back to God with strong conviction in his heart. And he told God, he poured out his heart. Come he, on. He, we have to understand from David's situation just how serious that thing is. Yes, sir. David is pleading with God. Come on. Crying out to God, begging God, look, I know I messed up. <laughs> Listen, I know, I know, I, I, I did know all the stuff. Right. But don't take, don't take your spirit from me, though. Don't take it. <laughs> don't leave, don't, don't leave me like I was when you found me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, come on, that's so, what we're trying to do, people. <laughs> and he says, they see, he says, I won't be brought on the power of anything because I'm already on the power. Woo! I'm already on the dominion. Come on. <laughs> That's the point. I, that's what I'm trying to. I think he said I've been delivered from the law, but I got a better. Some, I, you know, I have a right to do something. That's what they always trying in the Constitution, the right. But there's, it's not expedient. I'm married to Christ. Come on, sir. That, that's his statement. I'm married to Christ now. I'm married to Christ. Come on. And that, and that listen, and that thing is binding. Woo. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so now, now listen, what you need to understand about that is, is that you can divorce him. Yeah, well, he, he ain't gonna hold you, is it? He did matter of fact, that go with that scripture he said, if an unbeliever wants to depart, let him depart. Yes, sir. You can listen, you can walk away from this Christ who you want named Lord. I got yes. the guy that discipled me. When yes, I first sir. I said taught me basic Bible study. That juggle later on walked off and became a mother. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm like, good Lord. He said it. Look, I'm saying it from start to finish, this thing is all about entering into a relationship with God and remaining faithful to God in that relationship wholeheartedly and completely with all your heart, with all your soul, oh, all yeah. your mind, yes, sir. all your spirit. Yes, and sir. to have other people in a place higher than yourself. Yes, sir. He said, if yes. you stay right there, you won't miss it. You won't. And, and, and I like the part, you know, I just thought about it this, this, when they said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speakers, we, we, it's what's going in our heart. We got to protect that. Isn't it another scripture? You got to protect your heart, guard your heart. Or something? Jimmy, is that in the one of the scriptures, guard your heart or something? It is. Yeah. So, so the problem is we have to, when somebody comes into the body of Christ, we, what's got to be poured into them is the word. You know, and so that what's coming out of them, and I think that's where you come with, you say, right, with censure and stuff like that, because you can censor yourself. You can self-censor yourself. You can self-censor your house. Because you, what you want to do is you try to get something in that heart that allows you to speak it, right? Isn't that what this goal is, right? The, this, what's coming out of our heart, what's coming out of our mouth is what's coming out of our heart. And we got to bring it well, to hopefully, what, hopefully, what, hopefully what we need to be trying to do is make sure what's coming out of our mouth is the word of God. 
period. Wait, wait, not worn it down, not accepting or nothing. Just the word of God. Let, let it come. Let it come. And like I said, I think, I think, like, remember when, uh, when, um, uh, 